In today's film, folks, what I want to do is to show you how I built this turbojet engine that you're looking at from an old electric stepper motor. In a previous video, I showed you the case, the burn chamber, and our thrust drive fan here in operation just to see if it would work. I've now added our output nozzle, an aero spike out the end. We've now got our compressor fan. We've got our cowling, obviously, around that. I've got a defuser underneath the cowling going through there, and I'll show you that here in a moment. We've added a protection system for our drive shaft and our bearings on the inside of the case. You can look down here in the back. I've left the aero spike hollow for a moment here just for our first test. If I don't see what I'm looking for, I'm going to go ahead and weld that shut and close it off and then grind it down. But there you go, folks. Let me go ahead now, undo these screws, open it up, and show you what it looks like on the inside. All right, so I've removed all the screws from this. Let me go ahead and remove the intake cowling there so you can see what's underneath it. You see it's just a nice hollow cowling over here. And now you can see our compressor. You can see the diffuser plate here. Let me go ahead and pull that off so you can see the diffusers. There's all the diffuser blades right there going around. And then underneath that I just have a spacer plate here. And then all the holes going into the inside of the engine right there that the compressed air goes down into the engine. Now one of the things about building compressor with the diffuser here that you're going to want to know is that the angles of the diffuser blades and the angles of the holes that are underneath it are pretty critical. One of the key parts of this is redirectionalizing the air coming from your compressor. It does a couple different things. First of all, it makes shock waves in the air pressure, so it helps slow down supersonic velocity air to subsonic velocity. It also creates a trap zone, a shock pressure trap zone here to make sure that the pressure inside of the engine case can't come back out of those holes up into your compressor. One of the things about it is this. So first of all, if you can notice by the angles of the blades of the compressor here, they're going to be blowing that air out about this angle right here, following my finger. The first set of blades here on the diffuser actually bent back at this angle. So it's going to redirectionalize the air coming off of that compressor back the opposite direction that the compressor is throwing the air off at. As well as the little holes you see down here are also angled at a backwards angle like this compared to the angle of the airflow coming off like this. Redirectionalizing the air again creating another shock wave in it slowing it down even more creating a pressure hole right here once again to make sure that pressure from the case can't come back out of the holes and that the velocity of the air going into the case is at a subsonic velocity. So let's go ahead and remove that real quick and just take a look at the compressor head itself. If I get that up to the camera here you'll see what I've been able to do to build that. It's a lower fan blade down here. That's the second stage of the compressor. You've got your larger blade design here, kind of your conical blade that's going to grab and really force a lot of that air into the system. And then down here, these smaller blades are going to force it under pressure into your diffuser. So that is our compressor head there. Let me go ahead now and I'll undo the screws on the rear end and I'll show you that. All right, so if I just remove this thrust nozzle end here, you can see it's just a simple piece. We'll set that up here with the rest of the pieces. And I've got this part here that I built to hold the aero spike just above the drive fan. So it's not actually touching on the drive fan. So there's our aero spike holder. All right, let's go ahead and crack this case open. All right, there we go. So I'm going to do that. And you can see here we've just got our diffuser holes there going into the case. And then the rest of the engine's right here. And what I've got here over the center of this is a cooling sleeve to keep our bearings and our drive shaft cool. So it's basically just a sleeve that sits over that and at the end of the sleeve as you can tell right here at the end down there the end cup flares out and goes over the bearing cup there so it covers over the bearings keeps it cooler than it would be if the flame was able to actually hit on our drive shaft and our bearings helping protect that you go ahead and set that down here you can see the burn chamber for the system it's a dual wall chamber you've got your outer wall with all small holes You've got your inner wall with an air gap between the two of them. Now the inner wall's got slightly larger holes, and it's also all angled. All the holes in that inner wall are angled towards the back of the engine. So all the fire that's being generated out of these holes is being forced towards the rear of the engine, kind of naturally directionalizing your force, obviously. And what that does by having smaller holes here and larger holes here is make sure that the pressure from inside from the fire burning has less chance of going back the opposite direction as well as the pressure from the air compressor comes in through these smaller holes, diffuses into low pressure, higher volume as it enters into the fuel chamber, which is the gap between the two of them, then comes out of the inner holes with the fuel mass involved with it. That's why also the larger holes. So there you go, that's the simple inner burn chamber to the engine. All right, so real quickly here, we're gonna grab that piece back up, pull the cooling tube off of the inner drive shaft. So all we have here is an inner drive shaft, set of bearings, and then my drive fan on the end of it. 
and that's actually welded on there so I can't pull it off the drive shaft. The fan itself was just made out of one circular piece of metal and I used some tin snips, made all my cuts to it and bent the angles. Let me go ahead and pop that off of there. Like that, and you can see our output holes in the back end of the engine, and you notice they're slanted. You can see the angles to the holes here, each one of them. So there's the main components to the engine there, folks. Pretty simple stuff. It took me a little while to get it all right. So the reason we're showing this engine today is I just had to order the very small diameter stainless steel tubing I needed to make the fuel line system for this. That's the one piece missing right now is our fuel system. I don't have any tubing small enough to fit down in between the layers of this. So I had to order that online and it could take over a month for that to get here. Whenever the tubing shows up, I'll hook that all up, get it outside, and we'll fire this little engine up. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. Here's a quick shot of the engine once it was painted. I wanted to throw that in here at the end of the video just so you could see what it looks like. Kind of the nice RC style paint job on it. 